it absolutely did reach the conclusion that, from the economist perspective, Remain would be the better uh, direction for Britain. So Brexit came as, you know, quite a shock to the markets and, you know, with general opinion, widely believing that the UK would remain in the EU. And because of this surprise, the consequences have been far reaching. How has Brexit impacted The Economist as a business? Well, firstly, we are a unique media brand in the sense that we're actually not covering the news. So Brexit was an issue that was just right up our alley because of its complexity, because of the political and economic implications that it had, that our readers were really seeking advice and, and insight from The Economist and a clear interpretation on what Brexit could mean for them. So firstly, we really saw an overwhelming um, attention from our existing readers coming to us to find out about the Brexit Im implications. And second, for readers that don't know The Economist, it was a great opportunity for us to surface our content with the more balanced perspective, which was really cutting through the rhetoric and getting to the facts and figures behind the debate. I mean, the uh, post-truth politics moment that we're seeing today is one which is incredibly difficult around a situation like Brexit, where it's hard to know who's saying the truth and who isn't. And because now we've seen, obviously, the UK did vote uh, to leave the EU, from my opinion, reading from what The Economist has said, you tried to keep it balanced, but in my opinion, it sort of tended to be, you know, a pro-Remain, and now we, we have left. Was that intentional, a pro-Remain, or is that just maybe just an independent opinion? The Economist really took the opportunity to analyse the facts and the business and political implications of what Brexit would mean for the UK. And after rationalising all the pros and cons, it absolutely did reach the conclusion that, from The Economist perspective, Remain would be the better uh, direction for Britain. What that meant is, of course, you know, now that Brexit has happened, we are again covering the implications of what this decision means. And in terms of the business impact on our business, to loop back to some of the um, other thoughts on that, we, we have seen a huge increase in readership numbers, uh, specifically newsstand sales were positively up during this period. Subscription sales have been really benefiting from our increased editorial efforts, which, you know, both in the lead up and afterwards have been very focused on the subject. And then the marketing intensity, which we've been increasing around the subject matter. So social media has been absolutely present with all of our Brexit coverage. We've been creating you know, social native formats to be speaking to people um, who might not otherwise turn to The Economist for a piece of, uh, let's say, analysis on, on Brexit, but through that type of uh, information and material actually would. So it's been hugely, hugely a successful moment for us to be able to reach new readers and try new formats. And now we've kind of got a, a sort of similar event happening in the US in terms of the election, you know, Trump versus Clinton. And, you know, you had Farage um, you know, not too long ago going and, um, you know, endorsing Trump. So how, with your coverage of the US election, how has that maybe changed or how have you maybe altered your coverage because of what happened with Brexit? Well, certainly our coverage won't be altered. Uh, our editorial team and our writers will be doing what they always do, which is providing this independent, uh, rational interpretation of the elections and providing even more coverage on it because it is such a critical issue at this particular point in time. So we'll be seeing, you know, more volume of coverage because of the importance of the US elections. And the one thing that we will be doing in terms of adapting to what we had done with Brexit is uh, modifying our tactics because of the learnings that we made through the Brexit campaign. So those tactics will be around our live digital brand response campaigns, our content hubs, our live social media approach, our social media native content, uh, and also doing simple things like making sure our newsstand um, supply levels are right and we have enough copy on the market for everybody to be able to read us that wants to. So that will be sort of the mix. Okay, and uh, the last time that you were here in our studios, we sort of touched on the divide between uh, legacy print brands and digi uh, native digital brands. 
And since then, we've seen The Economist, obviously, you're always reaching your audiences digitally, but you've also been trying to reach them in real life through you know, experimental marketing programs. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. We're really trying to reach a very broad audience set, which we coin the globally curious. Now, if somebody is truly globally curious, they're going to be curious offline and online as well. So in the offline world, that means that there's an opportunity to be speaking to these globally curious um, on the street, where they are actually you know, going about their daily lives. So our idea was to really build an activation that just awakens their curiosity, but is linked back to economist content. So one example of this campaign activity is where we see, serve a free ice cream on the street, uh, but it's free ice cream laced with insects and sprinkled with bug bugs on top. Now, that type of ice cream is going to only appeal to somebody who's really willing to, to sort of go beyond their comfort zone. And we know that's what economist readers do too. They like to challenge themselves. So by the pure nature of the activation, we're, we're speaking to those people that go beyond their comfort zone, are curious, and then want to learn something. So we tie it back to economist content where we had a piece that was explaining that insects can be a more sustainable source of protein than farmed meat. So it's a great way to bring our content to life while at the same time underlining that The Economist doesn't only cover economics. Yeah, well, it's definitely a, an exciting sort of new, new direction The Economist is going in and we look forward to seeing, you know, what else you guys have in store. And thank you, Marina, for coming and speaking with us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. That's all from myself and Marina today. But if you liked this video, be sure to go on our website, ducascopy.tv, and give it a like and a comment.